Hey everyone, it's Dr. Scott with a video for week 14. Uh, there's three things that I want to cover in this video. I want to talk about wrapping up week 13. Um, I want to talk about ending the semester. And the third thing I want to talk about is conducting a peer review and things that I'm looking for in a good peer review, because um, that's what you're doing in week 14. So uh, first thing, week 13. Um, this video is being put together on Tuesday, April the 11th. Um, I had some dental work done this morning, so if my lip <laughs> if it looks like I'm talking funny or I drool a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, I'll try to edit that out. But uh, today's the 11th. Later this week, um, on Thursday the 13th, you have a discussion board post due. We're, we're thinking about different venues for publishing a work, um, a, your potential project in rhetoric and composition studies. Uh, on Friday the 14th, you are submitting drafts of um, three sections of your final project. So the method section, uh, the timeline, everybody's submitting those two, and then you get to choose a third, whether it's, um, you know, the literature review, the goal statement, um, maybe your IRB proposal, like you get to choose. I'd recommend that you choose something that you feel like you need some feedback on. Literature review might be a good bet, um, but, it, but it's your call. So three things do the 14th on the discussion board, um, timeline, method section, and a third component of your choice from the final project. I'm going to get in on Saturday the 15th and I will download all that work. I will re-upload it into perusal and I'll create an assignment in perusal for y'all to give feedback um, on your peers work. Um, so that's going to be available on the 15th. You then have until Thursday the 20th to give your peers some feedback. Um, and do try to get that response in. Um, I've been okay with things coming in over the weekend, uh, but this is one thing where I think having, giving folks that um, feedback before that weekend, so making sure that your, your comments are provided by the 20th, um, is going to be helpful because if you got a peer that, you know, they really depend upon that weekend to get work done, if you're sending them revisions or comment, comments and feedback, um, and you're sending it at the end of the weekend, and the weekend is really when they have the time to work on it, that's not really helping them out all that much. So do try to get your feedback in um, by the 20th. So that's what's, that's kind of wrapping up uh, week, week 13 going into week 14. Let me talk a little bit about ending the semester and some announcements for ending the semester. So this is the prompt for the final assignment in the class, the final project. Um, it's due on Blackboard by eight, um, by the end of the day on Friday, April the 28th. Um, I know there's some of you that you, you kind of need the weekend to get things done, and I, I apologize for this, but I, I kind of need that deadline to be set there on the 28th. Um, if you have something comes up and, you know, you might need to turn it in a little bit later than that, and I'm talking like a day um, at the very most, reach out to me and let me know. But I only have until Tuesday, and I think that's May 2nd, I only have until Tuesday the 2nd, to turn around grades and to get things entered in. So I, I need time with this work. Um, you all done a lot of stuff and I want to read it and um, I won't be able to provide a ton of comments because of the quick turnaround, um, but I do want to, to read and kind of think about things that y'all are submitting. So Friday, April the 28th, that's really when I need stuff in. If an emergency comes up and you need just a little bit more time, um, reach out and let me know. So it gives you a list of things that I'm looking for. And again, I appreciate your feedback on the, the draft prompt. It was really helpful in putting something together that it seems like it's a lot more useful and a little bit more specific. Um, so items one through seven here, I think there's a total of nine items that we're looking for. Items one through seven, if you could do your best to turn that in as one document, that is gonna help us out immensely on our end um, and me sharing things with other faculty in the department, uh, particularly those of you that are going up for a thesis project. Um, if the timeline is really difficult to put in with all the other materials, then it's something that you could submit separately. I think I'm fine with that. Um, if you put, to, put together a Gantt chart or something like that and you did it in Excel and it's really hard to translate it into Word, then I think it's fine if you send that as a separate document. But items one through six should come in as a single document. How am I grading this stuff? Well, I'm not going to go through and, and comb it for grammar mistakes or anything like that. Like I'm really looking at these three bigger things. Um, I want to know if the course content, um, and that includes things that I've shared with you, videos I put together, conversations that we've had, but also Blakeslee and Fleischer, 
and what they've had to had to say about conducting research in the discipline. I need to be able to see that those things mattered in the decisions that you made for the potential project that you put together. So I need to see in your method section, and there's other project materials that you're going to put together, I need to see that you're thinking about um, the course content and translating that into this potential project that you're putting together. So that application piece is probably the most important thing that I'm looking at. I'm also looking at your um, your engagement with your research, like the literature review research that you did, all those journal entries. Um, I need to see that those things mattered in terms of the project that you're thinking about putting together. Um, you developed a depth of understanding about your topic, and you also got a, a breadth of understanding. Like you understand, all right, here's kind of the larger terrain around revision practices or feminist rhetoric. Um, and given those, like I want to dive in and look at this particular piece of it, and this piece of it, I think, is what's going to relate to my project. So that breadth and depth of understanding um, in terms of your research, that's the second thing that I'm looking for. Then I'm also looking for explanation and support of your ideas, like you're explaining your idea, ideas thoughtfully, thoroughly, using uh, specific details that support what you're saying in your, in your materials, and that's throughout you know, all the documents that you're going to submit. Um, so there's some, I, I kind of let you know, there's some materials that I think are more important for some of these criteria that I'm looking for. Um, you know, your problem statement in your literature review is really important with, for the engagement with research. Here in the application of Blakesley and Fleischer, I think your methods section is going to be super important, but there's other components here and I list them out. Um, if you want to, you want to think about where you might need to beef up your app, your references to Blakesley and Fleischer, it's going to be in these items here. So that's a little bit about how I'm grading that final assignment. Um, again, grades are due for me on Tuesday, May 2nd. I think they're due by noon. Um, I like to have them done that Monday late afternoon so I can relax, have a little bit of bourbon, <laughs> play a little video game, and I'm done with it. And then I get up usually Tuesday, and just double-check grades, make sure that everything looks right. So grades are due for me Tuesday the 2nd. You're usually able to check them on the 3rd. Um, my feedback is going to be on the assignment rubric, and it's going to be kind of brief. I'm going to try to point to specific details in your writing, but it's not going to be a ton of feedback given the amount of material that you all are submitting and um, the short turnaround that I have to get things back to you. If you want to talk more about what you submitted, I'd be happy to do that. Those of you going up for a thesis, it's going to um, your materials are then going to be shared with Dr. Jen Scott and Dr. Knudsen, um, and then I'll, I'll enter a grade for everybody uh, for this class for research methods. Um, yeah, so a little bit of feedback on the assignment rubric. Um, I'll point to places in your material where I thought you did well, places where I thought you might have improved. So there's not again, there's not going to be a ton of ton of detail there, but I'll do my best to give you some give you some feedback to think on. And again, the offer is always open to come chat with me about it at some other point. Last thing I want to talk about in this video, peer review, conducting a peer review. When I teach uh, peer review with undergraduates, um, I take this thing pretty seriously. It's it's like it's the one opportunity, and I don't want you guys to get scared about this. Um, I'm happy to help you with your feedback if you're stuck with things to, to, to mention. Um, but for me, conducting a peer review, it's one of the few opportunities you have to help out somebody. You know, you're getting an education. You're there to, you know, to you know, improve what you know, to learn, to learn more. It, it's helping you out. Um, but I think any opportunity you have to help somebody else out, um, I, I think you need to take it seriously. And I try to teach that with, with undergraduates. I don't think that's going to be an issue with y'all, but it definitely is an issue when I teach undergrads. Like, you know, folks that just want to put nice in the in the margins. Nice is a four-lettered word when it comes to peer review. It's completely unhelpful. Um, so it's something I take kind of seriously. And there's a couple um, in the supplemental resources for this week. There's a couple readings that I found super, super helpful in teaching peer review, but also in conducting peer review. Um, and it's uh, Richard Straub's responding, really responding to other students' writing, and then Ian Barnard's piece on whole class workshops. Straub um, is what we're going to use. Uh, you're, you're not required to read it, but when I think about like grading your peer review feedback, like I'm thinking about Straub. So if you want to download his work, it's very brief. Give it a quick skim. It gives you a sense of the things that I'm looking for in a peer review. So 
Strabi, he, he talks a lot about different ways of going about peer review, but if there's a few key values that I think are super important for a graduate level feedback from one peer to another or an undergrad, or even at the high school level, to be honest with you. Uh, download this resource if you teach at the high school level. You're welcome to use it. I think it's super helpful. Um, so key things in a peer review. One, your feedback is in the context of the assignment. Uh, what that means is you have a prompt for the final assignment. I just talked about the three major things that I'm looking at in that major assignment. Your feedback should align with those things that I'm looking for. One thing I'm really good about as an educator, it's one of the few things I'm really good about as an educator, is that when I tell you I'm looking for this thing, I'm only looking for that thing. You're not going to see me going off the rails and saying, you know, you had a, a split infinitive here, or you had a comma splice, um, and therefore I'm going to dock you points on it. I think that stuff is nonsense. If I'm looking for it, and I tell you, and you do those things, that's one thing. But in a final, in a final project, um, I know y'all are trying to trying to do a lot in a little amount of time and there's going to be some things that you have to I can't pay attention to that because I got to pay attention to these other things those other things should be those three main criteria for this assignment um, so the feedback that you're giving your peers should align with those three big things are there other places in Blake's Lane Fleischer that your peer um, could talk a little bit more about is there a video that I put together or some kind of course content uh, maybe a supplemental resource that I've shared that could help a peer with a part of their method section or their literature review. Share that with them. Let them know. Keep your feedback in the context of the assignment. Uh, you want to keep your feedback honest. Um, you can talk about the perspective of I. Uh, I, I think um, making your feedback center around you, like you need to do this, um, I, I don't think that's very helpful. I think you can talk about like, you know, as I read this, I was feeling this, or I was thinking this. Um, I statements are great, you statements, not so much. Um, be generous with your feedback. You don't need to comment on everything, um, but you do need to provide some substantive feedback on your peers' draft. Um, we're here to help each other out. You have, you know what the assignment is for the course. You know what I'm looking for. Again, in the context of the assignment, make sure, make sure that you're giving them substantive feedback. If you struggle with this and um, you want some pointers, let me know. I'd be happy to help you out with that. Um, Make your feedback specific. Um, if you just say, I think you could deal with, um, I think you could include more references to Blakesley and Fleischer in this section. Uh, okay, basic. But you might, you might say, in this paragraph, as I read this sentence, I was thinking about this part of Blakesley and Fleischer when they wrote this. That is much more helpful, much more um, useful, I think, for your peer. Um, and finally, your feedback is explained. Um, you know, putting nice or awkward, um, what does that mean? Like, I'm awkward all the time. <laughs> you put awkward in a margin, like, yeah, thank you, calling me out. Um, but you explain your feedback. So if you say, um, I got confused here, um, I, I like that kind of feedback. Um, I think it's honest, but maybe explain a little bit about where that confusion is coming from. Like, you know, you said this thing here and I had a hard time understanding how it connects to this other idea. Can you explain that a little bit more for me? That is very helpful feedback. Um, so make your feedback in the context of the assignment. Make sure it's honest. Make sure it's generous, specific, and explain it. Explain yourself. Uh, we're not going to do whole class workshops. I love whole class workshops. They eat a ton of time. Um, and there's a lot of setup that's needed. If you teach undergraduate writing, um, even at the graduate level, I think it'd be really awesome to do a whole class workshop. But it's where everybody in the class reads the same thing, and we're giving everybody feedback on it. Um, you would see how that chews up a lot of time, but I tell you, it's a fantastic experience. It's so much fun. Um, and students hate it at first, but they come around to it, and they, and they dig it. Ian Barnard's piece about whole class workshops, check that out if you're thinking about it. It's a really cool thing. Um, and I'd be happy to chat with you about that more if you're thinking about integrating that into a class. So let's help each other out. Let's give some good feedback, uh, feedback that you would like to receive. And if you're struggling with this part, with this assignment, let me know. Um, I love this kind of stuff. I geek out about it. Um, it's something we're going to integrate into the, the assessment class when I re retool it for this upcoming summer. And uh, I'm looking forward to this, seeing the feedback that y'all provide. That's it for now. Um, that's week 14. We're almost near the end. Hang in there. Y'all are doing good. 
and uh, reach out if you need some help. Bye for now.